Good evening, Westerville Church, and welcome to Tuesday Evening Vespers. The Vesper service for tonight is posted there on our Facebook page in our group. You can download it, you can click on it, and have access to that and join along with the liturgy as we enter into this evening's service of Vespers. As we come to this time of Vespers, I invite you to uh, take a few deep breaths, um, calm your heart, push out the noise and the chaos of the day, and center yourselves on this evening prayer as we gather together. So let us take a few moments of silence as we prepare our hearts for this evening's Vesper service. Again, as I've encouraged you, the service is there on our, in our Facebook group as a document. You can download it and follow along. So let us come now to the service of light and to our time of being in prayer together. Join with me now. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Evening hymn tonight I've chosen is the hymn, Teach Me, O Lord, Your Holy Way. I'll sing the first two verses now and the last two verses at the end of our Vesper service. Teach me, O Lord, your holy way. And give me an obedient mind That in your service I may find My heart's delight from day to day Help me, O Savior, here to trace the sacred footsteps you have trod and fully trusting in my god to grow in goodness truth and grace now join with me in the evening collect the opening prayer of the best for service that is in your liturgy, and let us pray. We praise you and thank you, O God, for you are without beginning and without end. Through Christ you created the whole world. Through Christ you preserve it. You made the day for the works of light and the night for the refreshment of our minds and bodies. Keep us now in Christ. Grant us a peaceful evening, a night free from sin, and bring us at last to eternal life. Through Christ and in the Holy Spirit, we offer you all glory, honor, and worship, now and forever. Amen. And now we come to a time of the evening psalm. And we invite one another into this moment to hear this scripture. So let us say together this invitatory. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, hasten to help us. Glory to you, O Trinity, most holy and blessed, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for this evening is Psalm 10. So hear now what the psalmist says to us this evening. It's subtitled, Prayer for Deliverance from Enemies. Why, O Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In arrogance, the wicked persecute the poor. Let them be caught in the schemes they have devised. For the wicked boast of the desires of their heart. Those greedy for gain curse and renounce the Lord. In the pride of their countenance, the wicked say, God will not seek it out. All their thoughts are, there is no God. Their ways prosper at all times. Your judgments are on high, out of their sight. As for their foes, they scoff at them. They think in their heart, we shall not be moved. Throughout all generations, we shall not meet adversity. 
Their mouths are filled with cursing and deceit and oppression. Under their tongues are mischief and iniquity. They sit in ambush in the villages. In hiding places they murder the innocent. Their eyes stealthily watch for the helpless. They lurk in secret like a lion in its covert. They lurk that they may seize the poor. They seize the poor and drag them off in their net. They stoop, they crouch, and the helpless fall by their might. They think in their heart, God has forgotten. God has hidden God's face and will never see it. Rise up, O Lord. O God, lift up your hand. Do not forget the oppressed. Why do the wicked renounce God and say in their hearts, You will not call us to account? But you do see. Indeed, you note trouble and grief. Then you may take it into your own hands. The helpless commit themselves to you. You have been the helper of the orphan. Break the arm of the wicked and evildoers. Seek out their wickedness until you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. A nation shall perish from his land. O Lord, you will hear the desire of the meek. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear to do justice for the orphan and the oppressed, so that those from earth may strike terror no more. And our lesson from Matthew's Gospel this evening is in Matthew's 23rd chapter, beginning in verse 13. Hear now what the Gospel writer says to the church this evening. But to you, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you lock people out of the kingdom of heaven. For you do not go on in yourselves, and when others are going in, you stop them. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cross sea and land to make a single convert, and you make the new convert twice as much a child of Gehenna as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, Whoever swears by the sanctuary is bound by nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the sanctuary is bound by the oath. You blind fools, for which is greater, the gold or the sanctuary that has made the gold sacred? And you say, whoever swears by the altar is bound by nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on the altar is bound by the oath. How blind you are, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? So whoever swears by the altar swears by it and everything on it. And whoever swears by the sanctuary swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. And whoever swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by the one who is seated upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint, dill, and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. It is these who ought to have you have practiced without neglecting the others. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and of the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup, so that the outside also may become clean. This is quite a challenging um, scripture tonight. But these are challenging times as well. We have been called to figure out where we sit in the world. And I think the main thing Jesus is talking about here is hypocrisy. And uh, we sometimes can fall into that trap. And I was reading through a Walter Brueggemann book. Walter Brueggemann's a UCC ordained pastor, but... Uh, Famous as being an Old Testament professor at Columbia for years and years and years. Probably the best Old Testament professor we have in this country. And he wrote this book called Prayers for a Privileged People. And as I reflected on this scripture tonight, this prayer came to me. And it's called State of the Union. So hear what Walter Brueggemann says about perhaps some hypocrisy that he sees. We will watch and listen for the State of the Union message. We will hear the Sergeant of Arms say dramatically, here is the Chief Officer. 
We will watch the choreographed procession down the aisle with much back-slapping applause and good humor. We will be there. We will all be there. The leading military people, the chief justice, the senate leader, the house leader, no doubt a few momentary heroes in the balcony. We will listen to hear that the union is in good shape. The war is being won. The economy is coming back. Migrants are facing new rigors. Unemployment is down. There will be much applause, and we will be glad for such political performance. Except, of course, we know better. For this is not an assembly of the Union. This is a gathering of the suits. The men and some women who have good educations and even better connections. It is a meeting of wealth and entitlement and privilege. We will watch and notice with some wistfulness all of those who are absent from the meeting. The poor who lack voice. The pensioners who lack health coverage. The unemployed who lack benefits. The gays who still live under threat. The victims of disasters who still need our help. The prisoners who live at the very edge of their constitutional rights. We will embrace the buoyancy of the speech with gladness and with great dis-ease. But we know better. We know better because our Lord has told us about the lame and the blind, the hungry and the homeless and the poor, the prisoners, the ones who thirst. And we are in touch by our baptism with them. We hope and pray and work for a more perfect union, a binding of all by dignity and security and well-being, and less binding by money and connections and power. Our Lord is so weak and so foolish and so poor, and yet he is our Savior. We are pulled apart by our double awareness of self-satisfaction and dis-ease. We submit to your goodness our vexed lives that we cannot resolve. Give us honesty and openness that we may become aware of the true state of our union. And I think there's a lot of talk about hypocrisy in that prayer for a privileged people that Walter Brueggemann has written. And I thought that prayer reminded me of the scripture we read tonight. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, that you require this, this, and that, and you forget justice and mercy and love. So let's take a few moments as we ponder those themes this night. Now, as we gather this evening, we gather with the church in all times and places who has sung these ancient words of Mary, these words from the Magnificat. So join your heart with mine now as we sing this evening collect, we say this evening collect, this piece of scripture that Mary sings after having accepted her fate as the bearer of God's Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the loneliness of God's servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, the Mighty One whose name is Holy. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. 
God has shown great strength and scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped God's servant Israel in remembrance of God's mercy, according to the promises made to our ancestors, to Abraham and Sarah, and to their descendants forever. Now I invite you into a moment of prayer with me as we lift our prayers this evening, lifting up those concerns that are upon our hearts. There are some categories that I will raise, and if you have a prayer to lift during that time of silence, please do so, or just in general, any prayer that's upon your heart this evening. But join your heart now with mine in prayer. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Together and in silence, let us pray for the people of our congregation. Let us pray for those who suffer and those in trouble. Together and in silence, let us pray for the concerns of our local communities. Let us pray for the world, its peoples, and its leaders. Together in silence, let us pray for the Church Universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. Let us pray for that great communion of saints, that cloud of witnesses who surrounds us, who gathers us, calls us forth into praise and worship as we gather this evening, those who have gone before and who have taught us to be who we are, that great communion of saints. Let us lift those people in prayer. And let us join our voices together in prayer, saying the Lord's Prayer in the version that I have, again, uploaded to our Facebook page there. But if you'd like to just listen along, this prayer, Lord's Prayer, as is found in the New Zealand Prayer Book. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God, in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trial too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. And now our closing hymn.
I'll sing the final two verses of the hymn we opened up with, Teach Me, O Lord, Your Holy Ways. Guard me, O Christ, that I may ne'er forsake the right or do the wrong. Against temptation make me strong and keep me in your sheltering care. Bless me in every task I face, be gone, continue done for you. Fulfill your will in all I do, and grant me your abundant grace. Let us end with our closing sentences. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be safe. Be well.